Hey everybody, welcome to part four of my four part series on how I shot the red and white shoot using DIY wardrobing and DIY modifiers for that high key look. And as you can see, here's some of the images that I chose from the shoot. And many of these I've already edited. And so what I've decided is I'm going to edit this one for this video and show you how I get it basically to get into the color toning that is similar to what we wound up with in this image or in this image. So you're going to get the good, the bad and the ugly because I haven't edited this specific one yet. I'm going to show you exactly how I do the editing. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know. So the first thing, I'm in Lightroom. I'm going to bring it into Photoshop. I'm pretty happy with this crop, so I'm probably not going to be messing with it. Okay, so I like to start by just cleaning up the skin. And to tell you the truth, Liz's skin is pretty good. She's just got a few little bumps and things. But I've been using the Luminar AI, and I'm going to see how it does with all these distractions in front of her eyes. So I'm going to do a Command J. I believe it's a Control J if you're on a Windows machine. Go up to my filter, Skylum software, Luminar 4. I've really enjoyed how Luminar treats the skin. It identifies the skin for you. You don't really have to do much masking. You do want to watch it. Um, I once had it remove half of Liz's earlobe, but I really like it. So you come over to the left. I got this on a really good deal too, which just made me very happy. I think I paid like $25 for this. And I'll just push this up a little bit. And now I'm gonna click skin defects because that usually removes all the little bumps. And let's see what we've got. And let's move in a bit. So you can see here's the before and after. It's honestly not doing a whole lot. And I'm not sure if it's because the, um, it's really not doing a lot. So let me just see if I push this up a bit. I don't know if all these strings are just throwing off the AI. It softened it a little bit. What I like about this software is that it not only softens the skin and removes defects, but it doesn't destroy the skin texture. So she still has pores. And that's one of my favorite things about this. But I really think these, uh, these little embroidery threads are just throwing her off. So what I'm gonna do instead is I just wanna remove a few little issues. So I'm gonna put on a blank layer, use Command Plus, hit J for my, I just use the basic healing tool these days. I don't even bother with the option select this baby. I don't know what they've done, but it seems to work pretty well to me. And I'm just gonna clean up like, this the light caught this little line here. Liz really has beautiful skin. So I'll just take a few bumpies off her nose, nothing major. I don't really like to have to get into frequency separation if I don't have to. I think everybody should know how to do it, but I don't really feel like it needs to be done in every image. And to tell you the truth, she looks pretty good. So we're gonna go Command minus until I get her to a part where I want. Next thing I like to do is some dodging and burning. And I have an action. Um, I've done other videos that explain how to make this action. And so the, here we go. We've got a 50% gray layer set on soft light. I'm gonna hit B for my brush. I'm gonna hit D for default and see how the colors. Usually start with light colors. So I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna hit a one to bring this down to 10%. And then I don't want to zoom in too much. Make my brush a little larger and I really want to lighten this up here. I just feel like her eye is a little too dark, but I'm going to leave this eye in the dark. And I'm, so what I'm doing is I'm basically just dodging and burning with a little bit of white. And sometimes I'll get in here and I use colors and I am going to use colors on her eyes. Um, but I just want to kind of get in here and brighten it up and if I it doesn't look like you're doing much until you turn it on and off so I'm not really happy with this pattern here so I'm going to hit X and actually make the brush a little softer just kind of yeah just put a little more shadow there I think that looks like a more natural shadow and I'm gonna hit X and I'm just gonna kind of pull that shadow out. So I don't wanna to do too much here, but I do wanna work on her eyes. And so I have frequently used swatches. This color I tend to use a lot on brown eyes. 
And I usually will pull my eyes up to 20% because they can take a lot of dodging. And so I'm just using this very pale, bright orangey color, bringing out the color of her eyes. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go to Command Zero and bring this whole thing out. This is gonna be a fairly quick edit. So the next thing I wanna do is, this is a little bit too overexposed for me. So I'm gonna go back to my brush, default, make the brush a little larger. I'm at 20%, let's see what it does to bring it back. That's not bad. That's bringing it back well. And now I'm gonna hit X, and I'm gonna try the white on the bracelet. I don't like it, it makes it muddy. So what I'm gonna do instead is come over here and find like a pink. And you wanna be careful when you're doing something like this. I wanna bring out the red in the bracelet, but I don't wanna make the skin underneath it red. So sometimes I'll just like sample, like I sampled a bright part here. And this is making this stand out a lot nicer, as you can see. Okay, now I'm gonna take slightly darker red. I want to make these guys a little darker. And now I'm going to go default X, bring the white back and kind of brighten up these feathers here. Bring a little bit of life into them. Brighten up my butterfly. And I don't think I really want to do much more here, except I'm going to kind of play with her hair. I'm going to lighten her hair. Now this is going to be a little tricky, but I think I can desaturate some of her hair. She doesn't have a ton of it. And basically lightening her hair will definitely help to bring in that because I kind of want to make her have white hair. The other thing I see is this over here. Um, I think it's a feather, but it's distracting to me. So I'm going to go back to my base layer with my brush at 100%. I'm going to click right next to it. I'm just going to brush that baby out. And I'm not, I mean, I can kind of brush. I don't want to do that. These are pretty subtle, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I think I'm going to go back to my dodge and burn, go back to 10% and just brighten her eye just to touch it. And go back to darken and let's darken this eyebrow a bit and darken her lashes a bit. I don't want super bright eyes. I just want, um, I just want her eyes to be a little bit more prominent. But if I go super, super bright, they're gonna start looking like fish eyes. So I don't wanna do that. Um, I think they're actually a little bit brighter than I like. And sometimes I'll just take a mask and put on like a 20% and just, just take it out a little bit. That looks good. So now let's go back over. I've got my white on and I'm just going to brighten these guys up. Dodging and burning is worth the time. It really, really is. So I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead now and let's start color toning. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the hue and saturation and I'm going to grab this dude. Now I'm expecting this to be yellows. Yes. And I'm going to desaturate the yellows, not all the way. If you go to gray, I feel like it looks unnatural. And I'm going to brighten them up. And you'll see it's doing two things. It's not just desaturating the yellow, but it's also desaturating her skin, because see how much yellow she's got? And that's fine, because we're going for that icy look, but I don't want her gray. So now I'm going to go ahead to the reds, and I'm going to see what happens if I desaturate the reds a little bit and I'll bring them back if I have to. Um, let's see how that looks. Okay, so our color toning is getting there. Uh, the next stage is I'm going to add a black and white layer. And this is when kind of the magic starts happening. And I'm going to change this to a soft light mode. And I am seeing that I'm now getting very desaturated skin, lots of contrast, but it's too much. So I'm gonna bring it all the way down. I'm gonna look at the areas where I want it. And I like it here, but I feel like it's a bit much on the face, but I like it in other parts. So I'm gonna take my brush on 50% in black onto the mask, bring back, bring back her face. I really like the focus to be on her face. So now what we've done is we've added like a boat ton of contrast. 
really quickly. And it also darkens the reds, which I like for this look. So my last thing I'm going to do, and let me just see those eyes, because a lot of times, okay, the eyes are okay, because I removed it. So the last thing I'd love to do here is I'm going to add a solid color, and I'm gonna get kind of a blue tone going. And I tend to use this shade here of this bluey gray, changing to soft light. You can see that's too much, but here's what's cool about this, is I can, I can play with this. So I don't want it to be too dark, that's for sure. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave it right about there. And now we're gonna bring down the opacity to about 50%. And that's looking a lot better. I feel like she needs more. And what I'm gonna do now is make a stamped layer because this is all about the color toning. And again, I'm using a plugin. This time I'm going to go to Alien Skin Exposure 4 I'm gonna play around in here. I found plugins before that I used and it generally finds the last thing and probably Liz was the last thing I edited. So we can see here, actually, yeah, that's pretty good. Now, something I don't really like that I'm seeing is that um, her face has a little more saturation than her hands. So I might bring some saturation back to her hands. What I like to do is just roll through these and I usually have a pretty good idea of what I want. Um, honestly, because this one is so dark, I'm gonna scroll up to the top. There's one that can be really good for this, not creamy highlights. I don't want gold. I don't want, the well, light rays actually isn't that bad. But I like, will play with it. I don't want warm. I actually want this thing cool. Don't want vintage color. Bleach bypass, that is pretty much giving me what I want. And I will probably bring back some things in um, post. So if you see before, you see after. There's a few things I like about the bleach bypass. It, it, it kind of almost adds a creepiness to it, which is something we're going for. But I really, really can't stand that her hands are a different color than her face. So let's see if we can get those evened out. And um, this baby should be good. So let's see, here's bleach bypass. I'm going to try first masking out her hands. Go with a full-sized black brush on the mask. Bring her hands back. And I want to bring this color red back um, just because I also don't... Yeah, there we go. The red's got a little too dark for me. And her hands got a little too washed out. There we go. That's better. But I really love what it did to her face. But one of the things I probably don't like is right there. I want to bring her eyeball back. So let's just bring her eyeballs back. Just a full 100% brush. And I'm going to also just, just let's, I really love how it made the threads look extra dark. But I'm going to back this off just a touch. So let's see what we've got now. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do one more dodge and burn layer. And I'm going to pick up on the colors in her skin and put about a 20% on the brush and see if I can just bring her color of her hands up to match her skin tone. I really, really want this skin tones. Now, I know her face is darker, but so what I'm gonna do is just kind of bring her hands back. And now let's sample off a bright part of her hand. Let's see what happens if I just kind of bring this into her face. That's a lot better. And I also wanna bring back some of these details here. So this flower here, I really started to lose it. So I'm gonna just mask that off at 100%. Mask that off at 100%. There we go. Now we're gonna come over back to the Dodge and Burn layer. I'm gonna grab my pink and I'm gonna put it back to 20%. I'm just constantly playing with this. Bring this red back. I really like the red. But I think I want it a little bit darker. Let's see what happens if we just go in with a little darker red. Now see this here? I started to turn my feathers red. So I'm gonna grab my eraser tool and just kind of pull that out. There, that's better. All right, so 
I think this is pretty good. I actually never did much to the background, but just through processing the back, oh, there's, oh, one last thing. I'm going to go with a default X2. I just want to get her hair. Her hair is nice and desaturated now, which I think looks really cool. I'm just going to, using a 20% white brush, I'm just going to bring her hair back a little brighter. And I'm not going wow, wow, wow. I'm taking the highlights. I want to leave the depth. And there we go. We've got nice white, white hair. And if I felt like it, I could turn her eyes blue, but I'm not going to. That wasn't part of this look. This is, this looks good. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. My next episodes are going to be still working with this convertible dress, showing you three looks from one dress so you can have DIY flexibility in your wardrobing for your models. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.